Hi everybody, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and today we're starting a brand new section. This is section 6, so it would be S6E1 for section 6, episode 1. Um, section 6 is entitled Thermochemistry and this section, all of section 6, all of its videos explore the relationship between chemistry and energy. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the different types of energy and we're going to talk about potential energy and kinetic energy first. So the first major topic of today's notes is the nature of energy. First, let me define energy for you. Energy is defined as the capacity to do work or to produce heat. Work is given the symbol little w and heat is given the symbol lowercase q. So the concept of energy is familiar to us. We're familiar with the word energy. We know how to use it in a sentence and so on. But so the concept of energy is familiar to us, but energy is a bit difficult to define. So I'm going to make a few bullet point statements here about energy, and then we're going to talk about the two different types of energy. First of all, the energy in the universe is conserved. It can be converted from one form of energy to another form of energy, but energy cannot be created, nor can it just be destroyed. So you can't just create energy or destroy energy, and you can't get energy out of nowhere. Okay? It has to come from one form and be converted into another form. In other words, the energy of the universe is conserved or you could also say the energy of the universe is constant. All right. All right, types of energy. There are several types of energy and as we move on to page two of today's notes, we'll make a note of those two different types of energies that I want to talk about. Uh, number one, potential energy. Potential energy is just stored energy. It's the energy associated with the position or composition of an object. So what are some examples of potential energy? Well, I've got a few examples here for you. Potential energy, example, water behind the dam. That's stored energy, right? There's energy associated with the position or the composition of an object here that being the position of water behind a dam. Um, gasoline in a parked car, a ball at the top of a hill. So those three are kind of everyday examples of potential energy. The fourth example, chemical bonds in the reactants, right? Those reactants are eventually, we're gonna break those bonds and then we're gonna convert them into products, all right? And there's energy transformation involved in, such a, in a situation like that. So another form of potential energy are chemical bonds in the reactants. All right, number two, the second type of energy, number one was potential energy, so number two is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion that depends on the moving object's mass and velocity. Um, a ball flying through the air, okay, that's a form of kinetic energy. A ball rolling down a hill is a form of kinetic energy, all right? The next topic in today's notes is the difference between temperature and heat. I'm not going to get into this in too much depth. I'm just going to really define temperature and define heat for you. And then we'll notice the subtle differences between the two. Temperature is defined as a measure of the random motions of the particles in a substance. We're in one substance and we're just examining that substance, random motions of the particles. Okay, that's what temperature is, a measure of the random motions of the particles in the substance. Heat, however, involves transferring energy from a hotter substance to a cooler substance. So transfer of energy between two objects due to a difference in temperature. All right, so when you're talking about heat, you have to, you have to consider the a system and the surroundings or object one and object two, whereas temperature, you don't need to do that. So regarding uh, heat, heat, which we've already given the little symbol Q to, heat flows 
spontaneously from a hot object to a cold or cooler object. Spontaneously means it happens all on its own. You don't have to kind of give it any oomph or any force to make it happen. Heat will naturally flow from a hot object to a cold object. Okay, another thing on heat. Heat does not represent a substance contained by an object. So heat is not a quality or a property of any particular substance or material. Heat is just ener energy moving from one substance to another. So in regards to heat and moving of energy from one substance to another, that brings us to our next topic here, and I'm going to demonstrate this with the following chemical equation. So our next topic is the transfer of chemical energy. So we're getting into things like exothermic and endothermic reactions. So consider the following combustion reaction. CH4, which is methane, like a Bunsen burner. Uh, CH4 plus 2O2 yields CO2 plus 2H2O plus all this energy being released. Okay, that's energy is being released as heat. A combustion reaction, quote unquote, gets hot or feels hot. Heat is released, right? So first we have to define a few things, the system and the surroundings. System is a part of the universe that we're focusing on. All right. And the, I'll, I'm going to get specific on what the system and surroundings are for this reaction that's boxed up here. But just in general, the system is the part of the universe that we're focusing on, i.e. the reaction. Surroundings will be everything else except for that reaction. So in the example above, the combustion reaction that you see up there, the system is the reactants and products in the reaction. So the system is literally whatever's inside that box I've drawn. The surroundings is everything except for the reactants and products. It's the reaction container even. It's the reaction container or vessel. It's the lab that you're doing the experiment in. Um, it's you, etc. Okay. So at the top of our next page of notes here, it says in the, in the above reaction, that's the CH4 plus 2O2 yields... Uh, what was it, CO2 plus 2H2O. In that reaction, we had energy written kind of like a product. That's because energy in that particular reaction was released as heat. That is an exothermic reaction. Think of exo like, um, like an insect has an exoskeleton. It's on the outside. It's being released. The, that shell gets shed. Right? Exothermic means released. So in an exothermic reaction, some of the potential energy stored in the chemical bonds of those reactants is being converted, or even in the products, is being converted to thermal energy via heat. So let me say that again, it's an important statement. In an exothermic reaction, some of the potential energy stored in the chemical bonds is being converted to thermal heat via, I'm sorry, thermal energy via heat. So energy is released to the surroundings, right? The system is the reaction itself, the, the reactants and the products and their interactions, and they release energy to the surroundings in the form of heat. So that's why exothermic reactions feel hot to the touch. If you ever run an exothermic reaction in a test tube, that test tube will feel hot to you. You're the surroundings, energy is being released to you as heat. That's why a test tube will be hot for an exothermic reaction. Now, oppositely, when heat flows into the system, the process is an endothermic reaction. So as an example here, N2 gas plus O2 gas plus an energy input or an energy requirement yields two moles of NO, okay? This is an endothermic reaction because energy is, is going into the system. So if energy in the form of heat is going into the system from the surroundings, the surroundings are giving or donating heat to the system. That means the surroundings are left feeling cold because they've lost, they've given heat to the system. So let's put that down in our notes here. Endothermic reactions feel cold to the touch because heat is leaving where you are, the surroundings, and going into the reaction or the system. All right. 
So that's exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. Exothermic reactions release heat. Sometimes heat or energy is written as a pseudo product. And then you have uh, endothermic reactions where heat is required or sometimes energy in the form of heat is written as a pseudo reactant. So there's two key definitions here before moving on. Uh, thermodynamics, this is the study of energy and its interconversions. And then we have the first law of thermodynamics, which we've already kind of mentioned, at least verbally. The first law of thermodynamics is the total energy of the universe is constant. It's neither created nor destroyed. All right, now in our next video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about work and its uh, relationship with pressure and change in volume. And we'll do a bunch of uh, example problems on that. So hopefully you stick around for the next video. That would make it video number uh, S6E2. If you're kind of starting to see how that works. So that's not season six, all right? It's section six, which we're on now, thermochemistry, and then episode two. All right, so hopefully I'll see you next time. And feel free to subscribe by clicking that little molecule down there. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, bye.